Welcome to week two. Week two, we're focusing on replacing and retraining. We all know or have heard the Robert Frost poem, the ending stating, two roads diverge in the wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. For the longest, I thought this was an allegory for adventure, career, and life. I did not until, reali- until recently realize the road traveled could be patterns, habits, and generational curses. We've known the road traveled. If we haven't walked down this road, we've seen our mother, grandmother, or friends walk down the road of slow self-esteem. They've been mishandled by their caretakers, They've substituted love of their parents for the love of a romantic relationship. They felt unbearably lonely and chose to be with someone who caused them, who would cause them further to hate themselves. They felt unbearably empty and chose to fill it with whoever would give them hope or love. We know this road and we know the outcome. We also know the habits, the patterns, and the core beliefs that take you down the traveled road. In order to shift from the road travel, which is mired by unhealthy practices, we have to decide to choose the road less traveled. The road less traveled is unknown. It is temporarily uncomfortable. It requires a new set of skill sets. It requires you to admit some things about yourself that you are deeply ashamed of, and it requires you to forgive. Week two, we are going to focus on building these skill sets through replacing the thought and retraining the mind. To replace the negative thought, you have to be aware of the negative thought. Week one, you were assigned to take a note, take note of your thoughts. And by now you should notice a pattern. You should notice when these thoughts pop up. What is the primary focus? Is it your body, your brain, your lifestyle, dating? Is it loneliness, hair, features, color? You have to know this about yourself so you can create a plan to shift that thought. For example, my negative thoughts happen primarily in the morning. I realize that it is because I am not being mindful in the morning. I wake up in the morning and allow my mind to wander without structure. I end up replaying the past and it puts me in a sour mood for the day. If not that, it makes me very tired and I don't want to start my day. Knowing this, I now play affirmations in the morning so that my mind has a place to go. This is how you create a plan. You find out what your pain point is, you decide how you want to feel, then you work towards slowly getting yourself there. So how do you develop a strategy? I will outline multiple strategies. You can choose all, choose some, choose what applies and scrap the rest. First, you have to remind yourself that your story is not your parents and vice versa. So often we see our parents in immense pain and because we are deeply connected to them, we internalize the story as if it were our own. For example, my mother experienced tremendous heartbreak and growing up, I thought this was the path of all women. You date men who drag you through the mud and hope to make it through. So I date from that place of expecting to be put through bullshit and just like that, I sought out men who would fulfill my fantasy. I had to change that thought and expectation in order to have a different outcome. I had to examine the story. I had to ask myself, was my mother completely a victim? No. Did she see signs of bad character and still chose to go for it? Yes. Are we starting at the same point? No. Do I have tools she did not? Yes. Is therapy helping me make informed and healthy choices? Yes. Do I trust myself? Yes. Then this is not my reality. This is my mother's reality and I will be okay. I had to scrap the story and eventually you will too. Another strategy is writing out a brag sheet. You write out a brag sheet for moments when you feel low and incapable. You write out things that you can be grateful for, what you like about yourself, what others like about you, and you visit it when you're feeling extremely, extremely low. Think of it as medicine. 
When you start to feel sick, use your list as your medicine. Now, I realize that this is difficult for many of you because your childhood was not the most encouraging. So if it is, start practical. For example, I love my legs because they take me to some of my favorite restaurants because I love to eat. I love my hands because they bring me money when I do my job well. I love my eyes because daily I am able to see the sunrise and sunset. Remember, there is absolutely no one like you. That is on a biological level and it is also on a spiritual level. There is no replica of you. So there has to be something worthwhile about you. Next, think about how you're going to keep yourself going. Of course, you can power through negative thoughts when you are feeling good about yourself. But what about the times when you're feeling bad and you have low energy and you're irritable? One thought that I use is knowing that everything is a muscle and that at least one try helps me strengthen that muscle. Think about it. If you work out one time, you are strengthening yourself slightly more than the day before. Now, if you try a little more, you are accumulating more strength. And each time you try, you're getting closer and closer to your goal and further and further away from your start point. So build that muscle and understand that whatever you want to do, be and feel can be learned and built. There are millions of books, YouTube channels, and coaches that can get you there. Use them. Next, use post-it notes around the house or by your mirror as a reminder of your greatness. Or ask a good friend to leave an uplifting message on your phone and revisit it whenever you feel low. So you're feeling extremely low and you're feeling tired and you're exhausted. Hearing your best friend say some really beautiful things about yourself will put you in another mood. Use herbal teas, go outside, clean your house, clean your body and breathe. Breathing is the most important thing. When you start to actively breathe, you'll see and recognize how tense and tight your body is, how much your body has been in the fight or flight mode. Sometimes you don't even recognize it, but when you breathe, you start to unclench your jaw, release your belly, let your shoulders relax, your back relax, the tension in your head relaxes. So breathe. Also, when you feel a negative thought arise, say to yourself, look at you. You know you are dying. You know you are doing everything to survive. And too bad that won't work. And what you're doing is you're saying that to the negative thought. You're letting it know, I see, I know, I know you're dying. Because just like anything that dies, it's going to try to fight to live. So you're recognizing that it's trying to fight to live and it's trying to be stronger than you and it's trying to overpower you so that you can continue down the road travel. And you have to push against that and recognize, hey, I see you're dying. Keep dying. I have some new habits in mind. Next. All of the things, the negativity, the anger, the hate, the frustration, those things that sit in your core, they belong to broken people. They belong to the broken caretaker the, and the broken caretaker who had a broken caretaker who never found the tools. It's their inheritance, not yours. So don't take it. Finally, remember, it takes about six months to build a skill and self-esteem is a skill. So take your time, breathe, relax, don't beat yourself up and realize one day you will wake up in the near future and feel very, very empowered. 
So see you next week. I look forward to discussing week three. Take care.